Well, hello guys. It's certainly been a while. It's been a hot minute for me, about three months, uh, maybe even four, four and a, three and a half maybe, since I, since I last played Gravity Team Tactics and played this save. So I'm having to jog my memory a bit of what we covered, but I definitely have not forgot some of those awesome battles. In this video, I am hoping we can get some cool battles where I hold off those advancing bloody KV-1s. If you remember from the previous episode, we can see here three heavy tank platoons that are very, very aggressively trying to breach into our territory. So from the last episode, I don't think we actually lost any platoons in that last episode. We used up a lot of ammo with our MG42 platoon over here. Um, but in the first couple of episodes, we did take some significant casualties. But most importantly, our uh, anti-tank guns. We lost, I think, five martyrs. And then we lost uh, anti-tank section. Uh, which had four, I think, uh, pack 38s. Yeah, we, we took some nasty losses. So these KV-1s are almost going to have free reign of us. The only thing we've really got left is this Armada platoon here, which I don't think is actually weakened. We can see here, it seems to be at fighting capacity. So I'm uh, I'm hoping we can get something done with this. I think this is the Marder platoon we had in episode two. Anyway, enough yapping on, guys. We are ready to end the turn and go to the next one. We've had the platoon retreating here. I'm not going to advance on the enemy. I don't have any, I don't have any uh, ability to do that right now. Just completely weakened. Um, so I think what I want to do is push this infantry because otherwise it's going to locate and circle and die. So we can at least try and advance them up to escape back into our line. If a battle does ensue. All I will simply do is take a covert route and get these guys, hopefully, to safety. So lots of action, guys. We've got a massive battle using up almost the entire map's worth of resources here. So let's try and get our infantry platoon here to safety, getting them using some canals. Maybe they can even try and use this route here. I know it goes through a lot of enemy territory, but the enemy might want to push up to our border. So let's try and get them up here or through the town here. Take, get my guys. We've got quite a few anti-tank guns here. Some here, some here, some uh, AI ones there. So we can try and hammer those KV-1s if they decide to push up. And then really, a lot of dug-in troops which can hold the ground and engage where it's not too risky. But all I really want to achieve from this battle is trying to get as many of these infantry to safety as possible. But it's very, very unlikely. There's just too many infantry on their side that are going to be blocking the way. But enough yapping about all of that. Let's get into the battle. So we're in guys, and even though it's been about three and a half months, I know exactly where we are. This is the battle field that we had in our previous episodes. We can see here, the previous episode, it was this hillside here. The enemy were where our infantry was here, all along here. And they're trying to flank up. We were, we even got the trenches still here. We were here, watch go, we had some infantry push up. It was very, very exciting. We also used up a lot of this part of the map. We've lost this part, it's not included in this battle. But we've then extended all the way up here. This is a massive battle, but this is like using up the full range. I think it's the nine kilometer squared side. So it's a massive battlefield. Um, so what I want to try and do is if we have a look at the battle map, we can see here enemy are supposedly going to push up from this sector here, this square. I also want to say there's been some updates to the game. I've obviously been played in a few months, but I saw recently there was a big update. And it's changed how the battle maps work. You can see now it's not just sectors and I love it. I love this. Look, it's actually more flexible. It actually reflects what the positions are on the map. So before it would be giant square here, giant square here, giant square here. Now you can see it's actually curved and it's um, much thinner because the infantry obviously aren't taking up all that space. And you can see here where our infantry have spawned, they've actually spawned in there a little bit here with a gap where the enemy isn't so really really nice little touch there from from the game devs and you can see here this is no man's land yeah really like that i'm gonna try and get my guys to pull back as far as possible we'll hold this back line the sounds of the kv1 i can hear it nearby lads my troops are on the move. We can see here, this is my section or platoon actually 
of troops that were in enemy territory. I've got them on hold fire and I've got them on a covert move. Just that short trek away. They're here and they're looping their way to meet this unit in the orchards. Well, actually, no, they're not because uh, this unit here in the orchards, I'm also then telling to um, to move over here to, to fall back to the manor house and get in the trenches here so they have a good line of sight. But they're not covert moving, though. They are just on the move, walking very, very slowly. But hopefully they won't get taken on any enemy. So it's these guys here that I'm worried about. Everyone else dotted around. We've got a few guys in trenches. I've got, for whatever reason, this Lel gun. I couldn't move it. So they're all the way here. Quite stranded, but they're on the move back towards our other troops. I've got supply troops over here on the move. These guys in the end, I actually have left here. I was tempted to um, try and pull them back, but actually they've got really good cover in the sunflower patch and they can provide a good bit of vision as well as just have some semi-decent sights for any troops that are going to be appearing over, ooh, over the side. Okay, we've got some shots coming in and we've got sight on those KV-1, which are very, very quickly. Is that KV-1? Was that T? That, that's a KV-1, yeah. Very, very quickly driving down these roads and actually approaching. Do I have any? Oh, wow, they're bombing the shit out of my... <laughs> God, I'm glad I didn't have any, any guys back there. Okay, so I've got my Marders all the way back here, ready to deal with something like a KV-1. But the problem is, Marders aren't really into KV-1s at this distance. I learned that from my first episode, where my Marders couldn't even dent the KV-1s. So yeah, I'm going to have to rely on this gun, which doesn't have the best of sights. But if that KV-1 gets a bit too close, then we can start dealing with them. Okay, guys, we've already got some enemy infantry that um, were positioned right on the border and they've come crawling over into our space here. So they're blocked by the, the bushes here. But do we have any other units that would have a sight on them? Hmm, actually, our pack gun's here, but I don't really want to engage with the pack guns. I, I, I very well could do. We've also got entrenched infantry in these positions here. I'm not sure if they can see it. No, they can't. So, oof. this unit might just make it free. Really through our territory. Oh, shit. Look at this. Right on top of my guys. Oof. Oof, 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 oof. These guys are hiding in the trenches that I told them to hide in from the previous battle. So they're just there. We've got some enemy infantry appearing here. Oh, gosh, guys. They're already, already on top of us. We've got our retreating force here. we engaged engaged on all sides. They've just taken a massive amount of casualties. Six casualties taken from them. These guys have taken five casualties. Let's get them opening fire. Uh, active caution still on, but the KV ones are approaching. Yeah, huge amount of Soviet infantry pushing into the house position here. Hmm. That is quite worrying. We're fighting back, though. We're fighting back. But the commander's been destroyed. The Lel G's not really been able to operate. Yeah blown to shit yeah this position really 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 tough to defend i can see if maybe i can advance with my inventory but i've only got like 12 men here not really enough to to hold off but i can still try so let's get these guys on a fast move over here to just jump in these trenches that KV-1 is rolling on through the apple orchard and is just lighting up my German infantry running through. Um, mm, yeah, this is not going good, guys. You can see that uh, the infantry over here... Well, what's left of this infantry? They've only got six men left and then an LG. Um, this troop over here taking nine casualties so far. But yeah, they just got completely absorbed... Uh, it's the earth, really, by that that infantry fire from the Soviets. You can see here we've got some KV-1s really aggressively pushing up. And actually, some of the Marders and that guns 
are engaging. Oh wow, we're getting some hits on as well. And this is on a side armor, so let's see if that does anything, but <laughs> I assume not. What I'm doing now is I uh, told my tanks to move by road uh, down here. So what I want to do is we've got a bit of cover for all this growth. So if those KV1 decide to push up to the manor house, there'll be point blank range. Uh, and my, my guns will just be able to open fire on them. Oh shit. A lot more missile fire. But look, these enemy Soviets, they're charging on in before they reach the grass. Let's light them up, guys. Let's light them up. Oh, beautiful. That's payback for what's happening at the apple field. Oh, brilliant. They're getting lit up. And we can try and neutralize them before those KV-1s get too close. That's my thinking. I also don't want them to reach the, the sunflower patch and then be hidden and we just can't deal with them. Let's take them out now. So, we've got Chroma's unit here, um, who I pushed forward from trenches uh, far back in our line. He's reached our previous uh, trenches from the previous battle. So, from here, these lads can engage some of these troops. These lads in the Apple Orchard, while they're taking an immense amount of casualties and are suppressed, they've actually also dealt a lot of casualties to these Soviets who very, very aggressively pushed up to the manor house. So these Soviets have actually taken a fair few casualties. We've also got these guys here. We've only taken one casualty, and yet you can see here, littered with Soviet bodies who have tried to push forward and then been cut to pieces by their MP40s. So... Chroma's force here hopefully can do something to hold them back a little bit. And our retreating force here has actually done a lot more than I thought. But the other force that we started with in the Apple Orchards, they they, they did cease to exist. They've got two, two men left. So very, very sad. But this side, you can see five casualties overall. And I think all of that is from our pack gun, which um, I don't know how, but it got blown up. So it must be one of those KV-1s. We can see over here, guys, some of those enemy infantry have been spotted. And, oh my goodness, they're being lit up. We've got our MG42 as part of our light, like, what even, like, repair troops? I don't even know what they are. Light infantry, they're classed as. Uh, but they've got an MG42, and it's absolutely lighting these guys up. We then also got our infantry platoon, Gerber's infantry platoon, here in the trenches. Well, I didn't think I had a very good sight. A lot of sight, but actually, they've got a perfect on the side. They've got MG42s lighting up these uh, infantry here that expose themselves. So, yeah, this side, um, what is this, the eastern side, we've got absolutely covered. Yeah, getting absolutely lit up here. Little G's opening fire, more opening fire. Really, really good stuff. But, yeah, on this side, really, it's only the remnants left. Porches as, um, por I can't speak there. Porches as, <laughs> I can't say it. Porches. Um, his troops, he's lost 23 men. Uh, Kerber here, he hasn't lost any men. The only problem, uh, Chroma, sorry. He hasn't lost any guys, but the problem is they've got no ammo. So, they kind of can't do too much. And I'm thinking maybe I want to pull the guys back. But, I'll leave them for now. world is a flame. Fire everywhere. I don't know what's causing it. Maybe incendiary rounds. Uh, maybe uh, tracers. Maybe they've dropped napalm on us. Who knows? Maybe the Americans have thrown over their fucking jets. But yeah, there's fire all across the battle map. And uh, it's actually very, very good because it's lighting up. It's a very, very dark position. Uh, but yeah, got a tiny bit of ammo left with these guys. Chroma's forces here. Just to try and hold up any of these uh, infantry here are trying to push up to us. But oh, I am worried they're going to take over Chroma's, uh, Chroma's troop if they're not careful. 
Um, this side though is very worrying because back here these are just all light uh, command command troop. These guys are supply trucks. Um, so yeah, not not the most useful. But uh, I think maybe do I even try and bring the supply supply crew up? Mm, not yet. My marders though, they are on the way. They are just uh, I told them to drive by road, and I was thinking that they'd you know maybe uh, drive on this sort of like dirt path here to link up. But no, they actually have driven all the way around. They're going very, very slowly. But soon, soon they will reach uh, reach the position. We have actually got a little, little pack gun here. Um, pack 38. So I think that's actually doing okay. At trying to take on these, these KV-1s. Yeah, they're I'm not sure what they're doing here, but the AI has actually pushed up their infantry platoon all the way to the front line. If we look here, the, the apple orchard is just there, and they're reaching the little uh, little pond uh, or lake, whatever you want to call this thing. So <laughs> they've met the KV-1. Um, I'm not sure they're going to do much against it, but alas, they're there. So fair play to them. I've also found out that I actually have two other martyrs that were just attached to... Um, my command division, I assume it's because when the other martyr group retreated, these were the only two that survived and then just become attached to this one. But yeah, so I've got some martyrs here. I've brought them up uh, into a position where these KV-1s quite far away, but they are showing their rear armor, or side armor, sorry. I'm hoping they can get some shots off on them, but I'm not expecting, uh, not expecting too much. And then I've got my other three martyrs all together. So five martyrs in total. Not too bad, but the KV-1s haven't been too risky. They have, uh, you know, not tried to push up here where my martyrs could engage them at point-blank range almost. Okay, sadly, Chroma's force here from earlier, they've been uh, almost obliterated. They've got six men left. I think they started with 12, so yeah, they've lost half their troops. Um, but they, they did a decent job holding that position there. But yeah, now they're all retreating. And I think I might even just try and move them back. The enemy completely overrun the manor house. But we've got some KV-1s that are aggressively pushing up here. And my thought is, I want to take them out. So they're very, very quickly pushing up. We're now in range that my pack gun could actually take this thing out if it gets a side shot on it. So I've told my marders also to push up here. Got my three marders there, being up there. Yeah, let's see if this pack can take it out. You can also see here that my marders from uh, the other side have also spotted this one and are engaging. So if they get a shot on it, they should also be able to get a deadly kill on it if they get a. A rear armor hit. Ooh. Oh gosh, now this one is heading straight for the pack gun. Oh god. Come on, lads, take it out, take it out. I think we've got it. I think we added a hit, a direct hit. The, the, the KV-1 took the hit. Oh, no, it's rich. Yeah, no, I think we have got it, actually. It was moving forward, took the hit, stopped in its tracks, and then now reversing. That's an immediate the crew, when the crew must have died, and now reversing back. Um, let's see if we can get another hit on them and, uh, and finish them off. <gasps> oh, no. That's it, destroyed. And that's how easy it is. We only lost one man from that, but the pack gun itself, blown to pieces, completely destroyed. Ah... Uh, these KV-1s, they're absolutely brutal. They can take hit after hit, but if my pack gun just takes one hit, it's out. So the enemy actually being very aggressive. They've pushed all the way up to my supply troops now. 
come past Chrome's troops who have all been killed apart from those two. Uh, but yeah, they're now being engaged by all my supply troops. But they're not in as dense numbers as they were before. Because I've actually got quite a lot of supply troops. Um, these guys are getting slowed down. So let's hope that my supply troops do hold them up. Um, my martyrs are in place. I've got them covering, uh, you can see here, a decent bit of that horizon near the manor house. Uh, yeah, all these infantry are still fine. Three casualties lost uh, overall from these guys. So... They're doing absolutely fine on that left side. It's just this right side that's taken such a beating. But so far, none of my martyrs have been destroyed. Um, supply troops are all fine. It really was just that original uh, unit over there that got completely wiped out. And then the orchard unit that got wiped out. But yeah, not much more we could do, uh, could have done about that. They got completely swarmed instantly. Lone KV-1 moving its way past the manor house. Now into very dangerous territory. We've got our five martyrs sat around in the distance these ones don't have any any vision of that kv1 but if it if it pushes up they're going to be very very close these ones I th might be getting close to spotting it i haven't spotted it just yet so kv1 is safe for now but if it gets a little bit too too ambitious we might get some good hits off on it because how far out are we Ooh, just over a half a kilometer okay but if, again, that KV-1 will also whoop, whoop us as well, so we do need, need to be careful. Okay, it's not looking good for us, guys. One of our martyrs did get hit. Uh, this one did lost two of its crew. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's crap <laughs> um, We did get a hit off on the KV-1 direct hit uh, But yeah, it's done absolutely nothing that KV-1 is is ruthless um, I've got my two martyrs here, which can't see but I just don't want to push them up too far Because KV-1's plenty of armor, but my martyrs don't they're actually open back So while there's a lot of enemy Soviet infantry potentially here if I roll these through, one grenade and all the crew's dead. So, it's extremely, extremely risky. Um, but then saying that, me having all my tanks get hit is also extremely, extremely bad. So, yeah, I might have been a little, little bit ambitious on my side, thinking my martyrs could take on this KV-1. I just forget how absolutely awful KV-1s are to fight against. We can see the KV-1 in the distance just there. I actually have decided to push these martyrs up um, because I, I just, I want to take this one out. And actually they have almost like a side shot here. So I'm hoping they'll catch sight of it. Oh, I'm hoping they'll catch sight and then they will engage. And then now at this range, we're getting silly close. We're um, 250 meters out. So if a martyr can't take out a KV-1 at this range, I don't know how we're supposed to take it out. Yeah. Let's see if it gets some shots off and if we can take this motherfucker out. Okay, now guys, we're literally right on top of that KV-1. It's right there. We've got a flanking shot at what? Probably 100 meters this is? 108 meters. I don't think it can see it though. It's telling me you can see it there. But then it's saying it's not got a clear shot. So I'm not sure we actually can hit it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Let's let's hope we do finally get a shot off. But yeah, we might just be sat here with our martyrs staring directly at it. Oh gosh, we can literally, we can literally see the martyr right there. Bloody gunner. Okay, guys, I tried to push my martyrs up. They just wouldn't shoot at this thing. I think it might be because they're they're, st they're broken. It says they're light gun mech. And Tarek mech broken, so that's probably why they're not shooting. Um, here, my martyrs got absolutely whooped by the KV-1. Lost three of the crew. Uh, that one didn't get hit. That one lost. No one would just run out of ammo. Yeah, uh, the KV-1s, again, reign supreme. So I accepted the enemy ceasefire. And yeah, looking at it though, I don't want to say it was an even battle. I would say the Soviets whooped us, but not... A heavy whooping, just a light ass smack, I'd say. You can see here, casualties wise, very close actually. Enemy lost 108, we lost 112. I'd value our Wehrmacht quite a lot more than the Soviets. 
but a life is still a life. They lost almost as many as we did. We can see here, in terms of what they destroyed, they took out four um, of us. Actually, no, sorry. I think this is how many they lost. Um, I never remember which way it was around. I can't remember if destroyed and captured means we destroyed one of theirs and they destroyed four of us. I can't remember. But looking at the fact that tanks, it says they've got two. I can't imagine we destroyed four of their tanks. So, yeah, they probably destroyed four of our things. Uh, so we did damage one of their self-propelled guns. But apart from that, not much. We lost um, two vehicles. They lost oh, three of them damaged. Maybe we took out some of their tanks. Uh, like turrets or whatever. But yeah, not as bad as I thought, actually. I thought we'd been heavily whooped in that battle. But really, we lost three platoons. Um, but they lost just as many. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're excited that I'm back and I plan to finish the Sal Magila playthrough series. If you're new to the channel or if you're not yet subscribed, and you do want to see more graphic tactics content, then please do subscribe. Please do make sure to like. And I will see you in episode six. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you then.